We were so pleased when we heard about the launch of the ASUS ROG Ally, especially when considering that the device is competitively priced and only marginally more expensive than a Steam Deck, yet of course significantly less than a full-blown gaming PC or a gaming laptop. On paper, the ROG Ally is a more powerful option too, packing in a Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor and RDNA 3 graphics technology as well as some other nifty specs that make it a superior choice. So is it worth buying? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocalint, and this is our review. Now, it's immediately obvious that the ASUS ROG Ally is designed to be a portable gaming powerhouse. Under the hood, it packs some serious specs considering the price. From its impressive 7-inch 1080p 16x9 display to its sheer processing power and the potential for 120Hz refresh rates. The tech is crammed into an eye-pleasing and comfortable chassis with a classic ASUS ROG aesthetic. Yes, that means there's some RGB and yes, that means it also comes pre-installed with Armory Crate SE. When we first got the Ally out of the box, we were impressed by its weight in the hand but also the comfort of the grips and the layout of the buttons. It'll be immediately familiar to anyone who's used an Xbox controller in terms of thumbstick positioning and button placement, so it's easy to get used to. Some other reviewers have commented about the issues with the buttons sticking on the ROG Ally, but we've not had that problem. Though we do think that the buttons and the sticks on this handheld aren't as pleasant as those on the Steam Deck. That's not to say they're bad. The layout is comfortable and familiar and it's easy to play with, but they just don't feel quite as premium. What is cool though is that the Armory Crate software lets you adjust the actuation point for the main triggers, as well as tweak the dead zones in the thumbsticks, so you can customize the controller to suit your own playstyle. The front fascia also has space for front firing speakers, and that includes a smart amplifier tech to ensure you can hear your game and not the fan noise. The quieter cool cooling setup was one of the things we first noticed. When we first played with the Steam Deck, the fans were noisy and unpleasant. That's not the case with the ROG Ally, and you spend less time thinking about the hum of the fans and more time just losing yourself in the game. The Ally also has built-in microphones with AI noise cancellation, meaning you can chat with your friends and family easily when gaming without too much noise being picked up. We used this several times during Fortnite and it worked a lot better than we expected, showing that the Ally is full of little surprises. To many PC gamers, the ASUS ROG Ally will be appealing because it's essentially a compact gaming laptop. Where the Steam Deck is locked down to Steam OS, the ROG Ally runs Windows 11. And that means you've got a lot more access to install a lot more games from a lot more places, as well as the freedom that Windows offers. Sadly, our initial experience hasn't been great. Windows is fine on a laptop or a gaming desktop, but it's not perfectly suited to a small touchscreen device. The ROG Ally has a touchscreen that makes it easier to use as well as a virtual keyboard to type on, but we found simple things like setting up and logging into various game platforms just to be a bit of a faff. Tap on the email field on the Epic Games for example and you can pop your login details there, but when you need to enter your password, you'll find the virtual keyboard pops up and covers over the field and then you can't click into it. You can resize and reposition the keyboard, but it's not user friendly and ends up being a bit frustrating. Similarly, when you're launching a game and you need to switch back to Windows or switch between applications or do other simple things, it's just not that straightforward. Don't get us wrong though, ASUS has thought of this and made life a little easier with a couple of buttons. On the left side of the screen there's a button you can press that opens some shortcuts. From here you can change the performance mode settings or adjust the sound and brightness, tweak the refresh rate, take a screenshot and more. On the right side is another button that opens up Armory Crate. This app works not only as a place to grab the latest ROG Ally software and firmware updates, but also as a central launcher for all of your games. If you've installed games from Epic, Steam, EA and Ubisoft, they'll all appear here and you can just launch them from here. On the rear of the ROG Ally are two paddles known as macro keys. These can be reprogrammed for secondary actions to be used in games, but as standard, they give you the access to various shortcuts. As a PC gamer though, it's great to be able to relax on a sofa and pick up where you left off with your favorite game and not have to sacrifice too much. The ROG Ally seemingly ticks those boxes here, with the offer of 1080p resolution, 120Hz refresh rate, adaptive sync and other display tech, it's capable of running most games sharply and smoothly. Now, we played a variety of different games, ranging from Forza 5 to Chivalry 2, Spider-Man, Need for Speed Heat, Cyberpunk 2077 and more besides. Of course you can't get the same performance on a handheld that you can from a full-blown gaming PC, but and we found we had to play around with the settings a lot in order to get it right, depending on what we were playing. There are different performance modes that you can switch to in order to boost frames per second, but these sacrifice battery life. You have the option to run games at 1080p and 120Hz, but from our testing we'd say these settings are better reserved for the slower indie games or less graphically intense titles than they are for the AAA games. When we tried to run Forza 5 at 1080p, 120Hz and on high settings, we got less than 30 frames per second. 
but dropping down to 720p and turning on FSR and setting the game to medium, then we got around 70 frames per second. And we didn't feel the need to set the game to 1080p in order for it to look good either. There are things called FSR and RSR settings that can upscale and improve the visuals for you. And on the smaller screen, 720p looks decent enough. If you're the sort of gamer who prefers ultra settings on the latest games, then you might also be disappointed with the battery life. The ROG Ally claims as much as 9 hours of battery life if you're doing something simple like just watching YouTube videos on it, which look great by the way. But don't expect that for gaming. Indeed, playing our favourite games, we got around an hour of play before it needed charging, which seems pretty paltry, but that was with the higher settings to make the most of the visuals. If you're more sensible and drop the screen brightness, limit the frames per second, switch to 720p and choose the lower performance modes, then we found the gaming sessions could nearly last about two hours. If you're an indie gamer or prefer easy to pick up titles, then you'll probably get even longer. Now this is one of those other user experience frustrations that we have with it though. It takes time to experiment with the settings and see which works best to balance visuals and battery life, and this can vary from game to game. We found there was less of this messing around on the Steam Deck than there is on the ROG. That's the trade-off you're making. The freedom to play more games and do more comes at a price. This handheld has a USB-C charger that gets it back to full battery in an hour, and if you plug in and play, you'll have more power, better frames per second, and better experience too. The ROG Ally also has compatibility with ROG's XG mobile external GPU setup as well, so you can upgrade your handheld, dock it, and enjoy a more satisfying experience on a bigger screen. Unfortunately, that wasn't something we were able to test, and it's an expensive additional purchase. But of course, there are plenty of highlights to the experience of handheld. Running Windows means you can easily connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse for easier controls, and you can also take the ROG Ally out of the house and game on it. Just run Steam in offline mode to play your games or tether your phone as a hotspot and play that way. So it certainly has more freedom than something like the Logitech G Cloud gaming handheld, which needs a Wi-Fi connection. We took the ROG Ally out and played Spider-Man in the woods. With 500 nits brightness, the screen is capable enough to be used outside too. So whether that's casual gaming in your garden or on the train, the ROG Ally should be fun wherever you are. One of the highlights of the ROG Ally is the storage. It has up to 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD. The drive is upgradable, and ASUS says it's easy enough to do as well, but if you don't want to tinker, there's a microSD card slot for fast additional storage space solutions. It won't be as fast as the NVMe inside, but it'll still be pretty nifty depending on the microSD card that you purchase. Now in the end, we have mixed feelings about this gaming handheld. The ROG Ally is a perfect option for PC gamers who don't mind tinkering and tweaking. It's not for everyone though, as the user experience frustrations caused by Windows might annoy some. The battery life is also not what we hoped for, but fast charging and docking might alleviate that misery. That said, if you don't mind those things, then this is a great handheld. It's clearly powerful and capable of running modern games on reasonable graphics settings. If you plug in and play with it in powered mode, the experience is even better, and there are a lot of things to like. The screen is fantastic, as is the audio and the cooling, and the access to masses of games on the go is a big plus. Let me know what you think of the ROG Ally in the comments down below. You can get me on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.